Today, we are back in Universe Sandbox with more of your guys' suggestions. So as usual, if you wanna leave a suggestion, just type it down in the comments below or join my Discord at discord.gg slash spaceship. So our first suggestion for today is to turn Jupiter into the size of the sun and see how much damage it will do to the solar system. So we are here in the solar system. We're gonna find Jupiter, which is right here. Okay, so Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system, but we're about to make it a lot bigger. Uh, so right now, Jupiter is only one Jupiter mass, but we are going to... Whoa. Okay, so this is it compared to the sun's mass. So we're going to pause time, set the radius to solar radius, and we're going to set Jupiter to one solar radius. Okay, so that made the mass 984 times Jupiter's original mass. So I think it's going to turn into a star once we play time. Let's set it to real time. Okay, three, two, one, go. Okay, so it's like a dark star now, and I think it just needs to start heating up. Yeah, you can see here the surface temperature is rising very, very slowly. Let's see how this affects all of the other stuff in the system. Oh, they're already getting disrupted. Okay, so what's its mass compared to the sun? 0.94, so it's almost exactly the same mass. Oh, oh, look, it's like eating a lot of these asteroids. They're all coming over here. Look at the orbits, they're all out of whack. Okay, so look, it's pulling. Okay, here's the sun, so it's pulling that over. We'll see what happens. They might uh, kind of become binary with each other. Oh, Mars just got launched out. Look at that. I wonder how fast it's going. Let's see. Speed, 411 kilometers a second. Let's speed up time really fast and see like kind of the final state. So I think it's kind of like just going to destroy the entire system. I wonder if Jupiter will ever heat up enough to not be dark like this. And oh yeah, look, it's starting to heat up and become a real star. Yeah, it looks about the same as the sun now. Okay, so this is kind of what's left. It's the sun and Jupiter binary, and Mercury's the only planet that's left. Everything else got launched out into space. That was very, very sad. All right, our next suggestion says, can you create a binary planet system where both planets are habitable, where the barrister is perfectly in the middle of the two planets? Okay, so basically we're creating two planets that have life that are orbiting each other, and we want them to be about the same size. So we're gonna start with a random rocky planet, and let's put it between Mars and Earth. We'll put it right here. And we have to do this while it's paused so we can make sure that we get the sizes right. So this planet is 2.8 times the mass of Earth. That's a little high, so I'm going to turn it down to about 1.5. Now I'm going to get another rocky planet, make it binary with this planet, like that, and then set this one to 1.5 Earths also. And that should make them orbit each other. So it looks like they are in a pretty good orbit. If we highlight both of them, you can do create a barycenter. So yeah, this barycenter is the point they're orbiting around and you can see that it's right between them, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so now we just have to get both of these to be super habitable. So for this planet here, uh, it looks like if we add some water, that will definitely help. And okay, that kind of filled in all the craters and then it looks like we'll have some cool continent shapes. Let's add an atmosphere to it. Maybe a little more than Earth because it's bigger than Earth. Look at that, that's already looking really good. Just some of the visuals and we'll give it city lights on the back. Check that out. Okay, and we'll make sure the temperature is good and the rotation is good. Okay, and that planet now has 56% chance of life, which is pretty good. It could get higher. Let's try to get this second one as high as possible, like the highest I could possibly do. Uh, let's see, what's it at right now? It is at 53.2 already. So let's see if we can get it a little bit higher. We're going to adjust some of these settings and check that out. I just got it to 93%, which is super high. So what could happen is life gets so advanced that it ventures over to the other planet. And there's these two planets now that are sharing a life form. Okay. And we can actually use these binary planets for our next suggestion, which is create a planet by colliding two planets, almost the same mass and size. So we already have two planets that are almost the same right here. So let's collide them and see if it's still habitable after that. So the best way to do this, I think is going to be to save one of these objects and then we can just delete it. So now we have it saved. So now this planet is just going to be orbiting the sun like normal. You can see that here. And then if we throw the other planet at it that we saved, let's see what happens. Okay, it is now on its way to hit it. So let's watch a very, they're both almost exactly the same mass. I think they are like really, really, really close. So let's see what happens here when the two collide. Okay, slow motion, here they come. They look really similar too. 
Okay, there's the first collision, and it just seems like it's creating a fireball where it's colliding, but the, uh, the tidal forces are so great that it's kind of ripping chunks off and shooting these fragments out. So it looks like this one might be a little bit larger in radius, or it's growing because it's eating the other one. Yeah, it's growing, and it completely devours the other one. Okay, so our Anatev is what's left, and the shockwave caused by all of that is the planet is completely molten. So all life pretty much would be destroyed. So now we're just gonna speed up time and see if it can still support life after that hole. Okay, so after a while, it's been a few months, it seems to have cooled down. Uh, city lights are here, which is a good sign, but I don't see very much water. What's our life likelihood at? It's at zero right now. So let's give it some time and see if that goes up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it cooled down enough and now it's at 54%. So it looks like a lot of the water was just stored in the clouds. Okay, so we're ending with around a 56% chance of life, which is honestly pretty good, especially since I didn't change any of the settings. All right, and our next suggestion says, throw a planet through the solar system and see if the sun captures it. So like if a random planet somehow flew through our solar system, would it become a new planet? Um, let's do an auto speed launch, which I don't know how fast it is exactly, but we're going to throw it right here. So it's coming in from the top. This is the planet that is on its way through the system. I don't think it'll be get captured. Here it comes. Oh, okay. Okay. So what just barely happened is it got really close. Here's its line that it just did. It got really close to the sun and kind of slingshotted back. Yep. Just as I thought it is is gone it is going and it is not gonna come back okay so let's try that again and do one slower planet so if i threw a planet we gotta go far enough away that the gravity is not too bad okay yeah here's the planet we're throwing let's turn on the flashlight and for our speed instead of four kilometers a second we'll set it to 0.1 because it is gonna get uh faster the closer it gets so we'll kind of follow the planet actually so we're watching the planet go down it the sun is pulling it in and it gets so fast right here that's the problem i, I think anything even if it was still gets going so fast that the sun it just oh it just flew right by the sun that was insane okay so it would be really hard for the sun to capture a planet all right and for our last suggestion today we have the entire galaxy the milky way right here and the suggestion says turn the milky way central black hole to a white hole and see how it affects the galaxy so at the center of the milky way is sagittarius a star which is a black hole super massive black hole at the center of our galaxy right here so uh the suggestion is to turn this into a white hole which instead of sucking things in it repels things out these are theoretical we don't know if they're real but you can simulate that in universe sandbox by changing its mass to negative so negative mass and you can change the gravitational lens to white which i mean the inside's still black but we'll see what happens with that so the question is uh, is just the matter that's in the galaxy enough to still hold it together and like how important is that? So we got to speed up time a lot hundreds of years a second. Oh, yeah, look it totally worked It's like pushing everything out. I didn't think it actually worked that well The entire galaxy just got destroyed by flipping the mass. So I guess Yeah, it is important to have a not white hole at the center a black hole because everything just got launched out Wow, okay, that was really easy and worked exactly how you would think it would work which is crazy thank you so much for watching this video once again put your suggestions in the comments below join my discord if you haven't and i'll see you guys in the next video